low A1. In the previous videos, we have introduced the five zhang organs, six wu organs, and from this video, we are going to study the extraordinary organs. The reason why we group these organs into different categories is because the they got the, the characteristics of these funds, these organs are different. The zhang organs they store essence without discharging. The six fu organs they are hollowed and then they discharge. Discharging they cannot store. But for the extraordinary organs, on the shape. It looks like the full organs, most of them are hollowed inside, but the function is similar to the zhang organs, they store the essence. That's why we put them in the different categories as the actual ordinary organs. And also from the zhang and full organs, they have the paired relationship or the coupled relationship we mentioned so that's the heart and the small intestine the liver and the stomach the, the spleen and stomach the liver and the gallbladder the kidney and the bladder and um, the lung and the large intestine are coupled organs or the paired organs but for the extraordinary organs Except the gallbladder, the other extraordinary organs have no paired organs. And also these extraordinary organs also not belong to any five elements. So you actually can't put them in the five elements categories. The function of these extraordinary organs also rely on the five zhang organs. So if they rely on multiple zhang organs, the extraordinary organs refers to the brain, the marrow, the bones, vessels, gallbladder, and uterus. For the bones, vessels, we are going to introduce in the later videos and then the gallbladder we all already have introduced in the full organs. So in this video, we're going to focus on the brain, the marrow and uterus. The first, the brain locates in the skull and is where the marrow accumulates. The brain is quite tricky. You will see the, the function the functions of the brain dominating the life activities dominating the senses dominating the motions of limbs and chunk so from Huang Di Neijing, the brain is described as a sea of the marrow so because the marrow accumulates in the brain And from the function dominates the life, the life activities. When you see these functions, dominates the life activity, dominating the senses, the motions. Do you ring any bells in your in your mind? That's which organs have similar function, or which function of which organ have similar description? The life activities including the psycholog psychological activities or mental activities such as your emotion your feelings your the thoughts these are all included in the life activities and also the brain dominates the emotions the movements of human body and the senses so such as our vi our vi our visual sight, the hearing, 
the sense of smell or the movement of physical bodies, these are all related to the brain. And it's actually described in our theories, the medical books. They describe all these organs are related to the to the brain and the brain in charge of all kinds of activities of human body all kinds of senses and motions but when you heard from here it's very these are actually very similar to the function of the heart the heart houses the mind or houses the, the spirit these these functions are actually the functions we refer to as the spirits or as the mind. That's why the brain, the function of the brain, is very similar to the function of the heart. And this is still the the debate. That's the what's the lo, what's the position, what's the role of brain in Chinese medicine theories. Traditionally. All these functions we refer to the heart. So, if someone suffer from the disorder or impairment of the either life activities or psychological problem, mental problem, or the senses or the motion of the limbs, we will focus on the heart. We will focus on the spirit or the mind of the heart. We don't focus on the brain. But then, as the theories develop gradually, people realize that the, the motion, the senses, the life activities, these activities are, char are charged or are controlled by the brain. This happens in Ming Dynasty, Qing Dynasty, also hundreds of years ago. So some practitioners they they realize that something in our theories might be wrong, which the the mind or the life activities is not from the heart; it's from the brain. So they try to develop a new theories that's the brain, but until now, they have never developed develop a perfect theory that is have a position of the brain in our theories, in our theories. So in our theories, in our treatments, we still use these functions. We still consider these functions to the heart. The reason why is because if you separate these functions from the heart, you said this function consider this function under the brain, the brain, and then from the treatments we will face problems. You could not use any kinds of treatments towards the brain. Then if you this kinds of theories need to establish the whole Chinese medicine theories need to change a little bit to the structure to give the position of the brain and this it takes time and this also can be your your fuller studies so here although we introduce the the brain function we introduce the relationship between the brain and the five organs but when it goes to the treatment we still focus on the heart we still think that these Disorders, the impairments of the life activities, the senses, the motion of the limbs still belong to the heart. So in the treatment, we still focus on the heart. And in the, for the brain, we also need to dis discuss about the relationship um, between different organs. And for the zhang organs and fu organs, they have individual functions and also individual relationship they related to other organs but not that close related 
for the brain they belong to the five organs and they the brain function relies on the five zhang organs function so we in order to function well the brain we need the sufficient support from all five zhang organs the heart and the brains are related and also the heart the heart governs the blood which provides the nutrition for the brain so in this theories for the brain problem we sometimes can treat from the heart the brain also related to the lung because the lung governs the qi right so the in order to function well the brain also need a qi so from this categories we also can treat the heart the brain problem from the lung the brain the relationship between the brain and the spleen that's from in terms of the source of the acquired qi the acquired qi is from the spleen and also the spleen can help to rise the clear qi which is to supply the brain on top of our body so these are also related the brain and the liver the regulation of the qi movement in the body relies on the liver which also can benefit the, the qi movement in the brain the brain and kidney the kidney is considered as a, a sea of the marrow and the marrow the sea of the marrow is the brain so in this way the brain the marrow and the kidney they actually related very closely related together and actually in Huang Di in Lin Shu it described that when our human body when the eggs and the sperm mix although it's not described in this way they said when human being started firstly we, we formed as an essence and then the essence transformed into the brain and marrows you see this description was written in Huang Di Neijing which is 2500 years ago or 2200 years ago but you see the description it's very similar to the process of our human body developing first the, the eggs and the sperm meet together and then the first develop is the neurological neurologic system the brain and then the initial nerve that's from the modern science as you can see this distribution are quite similar so because of the brain and marrow and the kidney are directly related so for the brain problem any disease is related to the brain we, we always focus on the kidney as in general for the brain to, in order to function well we need the support from all five organs the next we're going to introduce the marrow the marrow and the brain are related because the, the marrow re refers to the bone marrows in that which in the bone also refers to the marrow in your spinal cord and then the marrow related to the, to the brain directly so the function of the, the marrow can supply your brain so can that can benefit the, the brain from the from the marrow the marrow also can nourish the bones such as the bones marrow the marrow also can ferment the blood that's because the blood 
the axons and marrows can neutral generate the, the blood is from the axons and then the axons and marrow can generate each other which means the marrow also can generate the blood these theories would these theories were recalled were written in the Huangdi Nanjing and the marrow also a very close relationship among the five organs as you can see here all the five organs all the extraordinary organs they all close related to the proper function of the five organs all five organs not some of them so these are the brain and the marrow the next we're going to introduce the uterus uterus is located in the abdomen behind the bladder and in front of intestines in ladies uterus uterus the function of uterus controlling the menstruation gestating the fetus so that's where the baby grows so that's the, the main function of uterus the first is the menstruation controlling menstruation menstruation is a the mature son of a of a lady as a human being a mature son so the formation of the menstruation it needs the sufficient essence especially for kidney essence that's why from the age of seven to the age of 14 that's described in Huang Di Neijing the girls the essence of a kidney accumulates keeps accumulating and then until certain age it described at the age of 40 nowadays it might be slightly earlier because we have better nutrition that's 2000 years ago at the age of 14 the girls have their first menstruation which indicates that's the the mature of the reproductive system and this menstruation and reflect the kidney essence so in order to have the normal regular menstruation from the uterus the kidney essence and liver function is very important the second is all the menstruation also related the other aspects is not that common but it's also related to the the career so it's just it's the discharges from the vagina in the period not in the period of the menstruation so if the uterus have some problems the discharges also can change the taking the fetus that's where the baby grows in order to conceive well the uterus also need to function well the relationship between the uterus and other organs the uterus is related to the liver in terms of the blood especially for the menstruation the menstruation is a is a blood is a is blood and then where the blood come from is the liver the regulating the qi regulating function of, of the liver and also the liver can store the blood which is the which is the source of the menstruation and then also the liver can con can control the volume of the blood circulation which is the menstruation is part of the circulation so the uterus 
has very close relationship to the liver and that's exactly why in our daily practice patients suffer from irregular menstruation anything related to menstruation we always focus on the treatment towards the liver so that's because of the the relationship through the blood the uterus and the spleen this is also based on the relationship of blood and qi we acquire the qi and acquire the acquired qi transforms into blood that's where the nutrition comes from to nourish the uterus this qi can change can change into the human milk for the infant also can change into blood as the form of menstruation so where does the menstruation come from it's from the liver, but originally it's the source from the spleen, which is the part of the acquired qi, acquired qi, the uterus and the kidney. The kidney stores essence, and the essence can generate the marrow. The essence, the kidney and the essence is in charge of the human reproduction. That's the gestating the fetus it's con it's a part of the reproduction. So the uterus and the kidney are also very closely related together. Apart from the organs, also the meridians. The meridian also very closely related to the uterus. The uter the uterus and the tone meridians. The uterus and rim meridians. And uterus and two meridians. These are all origin from the uterus. And these names might be new to you, but when we study the meridian and cholesterols, you will understand the flow, the direction of the meridians. Then you will know where the meridian regions so that's the the functions and the relationship of the uterus then for the extraordinary organs we will introduce the three that's what you, sometimes sometimes you will ask does for uterus you introduce the females but where's the male parts so for male parts we refer to the testicle. We refer to testicle, testicles, and why we don't introduce specifically? That's because the the function of testicle is quite simple. They only control the reproduction, and these external genitalia organs are related to the kidney so actually they belong to the kidney function and the relationship between the testicle and other organs are also related to the kidney so it is this actually introduced under the kidney okay so that's all the internal organs we are going to introduce in the next videos, we're going to introduce some of the body con constituents and their functions. Thank you guys.